So this is going to be a real CS2 optimization guide. First, I just want to show you the results I was able to get. Here are my system specs. 9800X3D, 5070 Ti, 6000 MTS CL30 RAM. These are my video settings, which will stay exactly the same throughout the test. I won't drop to 240p, put it graphics, and then say, hey, look, can say an FPS boost. We are keeping realistic settings. That's the whole point of the video. Across average FPS, P1 and 1% lows, I saw about a 20% improvement in all three metrics. Before we jump into what I changed, a few important things i'm not going to be snake oiling you or suggesting some black magic registry tweaks in fact a lot of these things are going to be myth busting some mystical commands from blurbuster forums that people still copy paste to this day without even understanding technology has evolved a lot of old advice is outdated and useless today this guide is data driven open source and focused on real improvements not fairy dust and guess what every single cap frame x capture every cp clock every temperature every frame time will be on my github open source completely transparent so you can see exactly how i tested and verify that i'm not secretly changing my clock speeds behind the scene if you want to understand how i run my test check this video here everything is automated to avoid human error shaders are properly built end of sample runs are collected warm-up stages are including so there's pre what do we call it warm caching nothing is manually influenced you'll be able to open the files in kafri max and confirm whether something was boosted or not Quick message to the people who ask me to optimize their PC. A lot of pro players and even some of you guys want me to optimize your PC. You're willing to pay me even good money for it. But I'm not going to be taking any money for optimizing your PC. I'm not an optimizer guru. I'm just someone who struggled a lot, tried to fix my own problems and the internet only gave me absolute nonsense. So I built my own latency tool, experimented for months and eventually learned that a huge part of the optimization world is just snake oil. That's why I do this, so you don't have to go through the same pain. So let's get started, let's be realistic, practical, and we are going to bust a whole lot of snake oil along the way. So let's get right into it. So first let's start by Expo 1. A lot of people think just switching to Expo 1 is going to drastically increase their FPS. Well, as you can see, it doesn't really do that much, but I still recommend that you put it at on but it is just going to give you like two percent improvement it's, it's not much so yeah just imagine how much you've been kind of peer pressured into buying these rams which are already overpriced just because of their profiles now doing some basic ram tuning that is uclk to mem clk like you get these values if you have the same ram stick as me you can do that the latency benefit you're not going to be able to see a lot of people say that you're going to get a lot of latency benefit well technically yes but in real world scenario with an end-to-end -end input latency you're not really going to see any difference it's impossible to perceive that difference so i recommend if you guys don't want to do this then don't do this and move on to the next test Next up, PBO, this is completely safe to do. I've only done something which is quite safe. Now, the reason I don't want to go into deep overclocking is because I don't know how hot your temperature is going to be, which CPU you're using, what if you mess something up, what if you're doing some deep RAM tuning, what if you mess something up, you are not getting any boot, you don't know how to reset some stuff, or what if you really fry your CPU. So this is the reason I don't want to go into this. Maybe I'll make a detailed video later on. Now, coming to resizable bar, it doesn't make any difference in CS2. I suggest keeping it on in your BIOS, just in case you want to play Red Dead Redemption or some games which actually utilize it. But over in CS2, even if you go to the profile inspector and change it, it's like turning on a button which doesn't do anything really. So again, very marginal differences, that's just the error of margin from the benchmark itself now coming to c state i think it was called cool, cool and quick something like that for the amds it doesn't make any difference it is not really a power saving as in the way people think about power saving it doesn't even affect your ccx so i don't know why people say disable this do that it, it won't make a difference you can keep it enabled auto disabled doesn't make a difference now integrated graphics it doesn't really disabling it doesn't really improve your fps by a lot but i recommend turning this off if you have a discrete gpu this is because it can kind of cause some bugs when you're kind of doing some other stuff so it is better to disable this one so i recommend you disable this one especially in laptops so make sure you disable it performance improvement barely anything not going to do anything so let's talk about the meaningful changes right after a word from our sponsor this video is sponsored by skinlet the official partner of team vitality 
they've got one of the best market rates for buying and selling your skins. Right now the skin prices are really low so make sure you take advantage of this. Not only that, if you use my link in the description or code KITCHEN, you can get up to $10 free on your first trade. They've got ton of payout options, the largest selection of skins and a 4.6 trust pilot rating. If you complete your KYC, you can now receive instant payouts in their new payout systems. So go out there and check out Skinland using my link in the description. Now it's very important for me to benchmark process lasso as well as I'm going to be using it quite a lot. It does have some performance overhead. It's not much on my main system, but if you have a weaker system, it's going to be a lot more because it is going to run a lot of governor. So a lot of affinities if you want to apply and you have a weekend system, you should just do it using your task manager rather than process lasso. For me, it's not a hassle. I'm fine with this little degradation of 1.5%. Now coming to the ultimate and balanced power plan, you don't have to install a power plan given by any particular person you can just use it in your own pc for some of you normally it's going to work better like on my alternate pc the 7900 x3d it has its own scheduling logic so balance gives me like plus 150 fps but over here it makes uh, really no difference you can choose whatever you like but make sure you test it on your system don't just copy the ultimate power plan blindly now coming to putting the CPU or GPU to high priority, it's not going to do anything, it's snake oil at this point, somebody is even going to suggest you to put in the launch option minus high, not gonna do anything, not gonna give you any performance improvement, in fact it's going to just screw with the scheduler, create more crashes, make sure you don't do any of these things and just leave the things as they are. Now coming to SMT, this is a quite interesting one because on my other PC it does lead to a lot of performance improvement. Over here you can see it does lead to a slight performance improvement. In some cases like it's a mixed bag but on my 7900X3D, when I do it using my BIOS, like it leads to a substantial improvement. So this is something you should experiment, not just in process lasso but also in motherboard. So this is something that you should try and see if it improves your performance. Now coming to Core Zero Disabled, this is one of the biggest things which you can do. This is you disabling your logical cores 1 and 2 or your core 0 in your CPU. Especially if you have a 8 CPU PC like the 9800X3D, 7800X3D, this is going to lead to performance boost. On my 7900X3D, it doesn't change my FPS whatsoever. But over here, it does lead to a substantial increase in 1% loss. Now, security features on and off. On my laptop, this actually improved my performance i think let me just check yeah by 4.2 percent but over here it wasn't that much so on a low-end pc it's going to help you much better i think but over here the performance to risk ratio is just too skewed i'm definitely going to be leaving everything at on including core isolation now coming to game mode off and on over here it doesn't really make that much difference on my 7900 x3d though Leaving game, game mode on leads to substantial better performance, but over here it doesn't really make a difference. This shows to show you, like, in a lot of systems, how variable these things are, so people just telling you to just blindly copy them, like, please don't do that, guys. Just uh, some of the settings, you want to test it on your own computer. Now, coming to Windows Appearance Prefer Performance, this will lead to better performance. In my main PC, obviously, this is already kind of top line. It's not really going to improve things so much, but it does improve things on my laptop as well. And I tried it on my 7900X3D. It did lead to improvement there as well. So this is something you can do if you're really short of, you know, FPS, you want to get that teeny tiny edge. You can definitely try this out. Now, coming to overlays, you should definitely disable as many as you can. Steam, I don't disable, but NVIDIA overlay, I always keep it disabled. I think it has a much worse impact on performance than Steam overlay. And Steam overlay is also quite useful, so I don't disable it. But yeah, if you are looking for that extra FPS, extra stability, you should disable it. But don't in kind of expect improvement beyond 5%. Now, coming to the Win32 priority separation, I used all the values all these guys have been cooking about. Curvy frames in clubs. It doesn't make a difference, guys. Uh, this was supposed to be used by servers. Let's say you go to sleep at night and you want your PC to do some server-sided things, so you would change these values. It would lead to more power savings and stuff like that. But yeah, the way these people are using this, and I'm really disappointed. A lot of people told me that Corvi has really quality videos, and I just checked this video. Over here, he's just running around the map. How can you kind of, you know, you're just doing one test, and you're doing using these values, and you're just playing the game. 
The game is going to be different, there can be a different amount of players, they can be using different skin at different times. Hell in fact, even when I'm doing my benchmarks with everything same, there is still some variation, you know? So this is really disappointing because it is just benchmark variation that is being put out there, it's like this is performing better. So very disappointed, a lot of you guys suggested me his channel, maybe other videos are of good quality, but I just saw this video and I'm very disappointed to say the least. So let's move on from there. Now, disabling Windows Search is going to greatly benefit if you're kind of using Windows 10. I remember the Windows 8.1 super fetch bug, which would lead to your disk usage to be 100%. It was so freaking weird. Uh, but you guys most probably are on 10. It can benefit you. It will definitely lead to some performance improvements. But on my PC, it doesn't really affect that much because it's already kind of maxed out. But yeah, if you have a low-end PC, you can try this out. Now, coming to the workshop maps being installed and cleaned... <laughs> This is funny because I got less FPS with Clint. Um, the reason might be is because since I deleted all the maps and then installed the workshop map, it might actually take slightly longer to do the shader cache warming. Maybe I just did two runs. Maybe if I just did long enough and then I did the five recording runs, it would come out. But don't look up too much into it. This really just shows you don't have to care about the workshop maps. Now coming to Hacks On and Hacks Off, for me, Hacks On was showing much better performance. I, mean, I won't say much better, it is slightly better. But yeah, and it also helps you with some frame generation and stuff. So I suggest you keep it at on but definitely test it once but i would suggest keep it at on because of all the benefit it offers now if i really wanted to optimize i would just kill the background services like my microphone and all this stupid stuff going on here the server usually i don't code on this pc but i still have some coding going on on this pc because i need to make the animations and stuff like that so going over there, removing all the background services, removing process lasso, making sure I set the affinity using the task manager, making sure like I'm removing all the unnecessary workload. I'm not automating the benchmark anymore. I stopped the Python script. I'm doing it manually by my hand. So all of this led to a substantial increase in average FPS, <laughs> but it didn't affect my 1% low. So I don't really care about it. I'm not going to be doing so much hassle for just, you know, getting 850 average FPS because I don't really care. Since my 1% lows kind of seem capped at around 305, I'm fine with it. So let me tell you the settings which I use. I don't go for the max FPS. So I... Disable my integrated graphics, I enable Expo 1, I do basic RAM tuning, I do basic PBO, I keep resizable bar enabled, I leave the C state as it is, I let process lasso run. For my power plan, I just use the ultimate preference. For priority, I don't change it. SMT, I keep it at on. Core 0, I do disable it. All my security features are on. Core isolation is on. For me, game mode is also on. When it comes to prefer performance here in appearance, I select best appearance. For overlays, I don't have the NVIDIA overlay on, but I do have the Steam overlay on. Now, Win32 priority separation, I keep it default, which is the decimal value too. Windows search, I keep it enabled. Workshop map deleted, I don't really care. It doesn't affect my FPS. Hacks, I leave it at on. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't include NVIDIA settings or video settings in this one. That is because it also affects the picture quality and latency in some cases. So I want to make sure I research about it first properly, seeing the visual quality differences, the performance impact, the input latency impact, and I'm going to be making a dedicated video for that. So it's going to take some time because my research takes a time because I don't do it randomly. So thank you, guys. Hope you guys like the content. It is a realistic guide. So many of you, you are maybe going to see like plus 20, plus 30, plus 50 FPS in most cases. And you're not going to be seeing as much improvement unless you have the same hardware as me. So I hope you're disappointed, but honestly. And uh, thank you to all the channel members. And thank you to everyone who is watching this video. And make sure you share it with your friends who are always worried about some stupid registry tweak.